Hello, Algebra students, and welcome to your combined lesson 3, 5, and 3, 6 on scatter plots and lines of best fit and analyzing lines of fit. So you can see that in the first lesson here, we're going to review your knowledge of scatter plots, which I'm sure you know of, and then talk about lines of fit. And then you'll notice the second one also has these words lines of fit. So again, you can see that that is uh, a point to be emphasized. Uh, these two topics uh, revolve around statistics. Um, for your Ohio State test, there is a uh, section of statistics uh, that needs to be covered, and this, uh, these two sections are a big part of uh, that information. Okay, so uh, if we take a look here, um, example one: understand association. It says, what is the relationship between the hours after sunrise x and the temperature y shown in the scatter plot? Now we're going to do two. Um, so this is the first graph here is your hours after sunrise, okay, and then the temperature. Well, of course, right, as you go from early in the morning to the afternoon, as the sun is rising, you're going to get warmer. You're going to get warmer. And what that means is, as the time goes by, your temperatures are going up. You can see this sort of trend right here that's going in this direction i know it flattens out around noon but you see this overall trend going up into the right that is a positive correlation so let me slide this key thing up here so we're going to write the word positive right here right again if you think of what kind of line what kind of slope does this line have as a positive slope right and what this means is as x is going to the right as x is increasing your y is going up or also increasing. And that's the idea about a positive correlation. As x increases, y increases. Now the second one here, I'll change colors to blue. Now it says temperature after sunset. So now we're setting the sun. So now we're going from mid-afternoon into the night and we're comparing the temperature. Well, of course, as the sun sets, you're going to get colder outside, right? Get cooler. So you can see I can kind of draw this line here. And again, at some point during the middle of the night, it kind of tapers off, right? So this is an example of what's called a negative correlation or negative association because as your time is passing, now your temperatures are going down. So we're going to put the word negative. Again, you can see that this slope of the line here is a negative slope. And that just means as your x's are increasing to the right, your y's are going down now. And then last but not least over here, it kind of changes up. It says, what is the relationship between the hours after sunset, X, and the amount of rain, Y, shown in the scatter plot? So again, we're trying to compare uh, hours after sunset and the amount of rainfall. Well, there's really no telling, right? Rain is created by many different things besides just the, uh, besides just the temperature. So you can see right here, there's no pattern. These points are just scattered. Uh, if you take future statistics, you'll say that they're just random points, random dots. And again, there is no trend. So if there's no trend, we're going to say that there is no, or no pattern, we're going to say there's no association. So as your X is increasing, there is no known pattern between the Y. Some are going up, some are going down. So there you go. So there's your three types of associations when it comes to, uh, we call it bivariate data or two sets of data. All right, next here it says, uh, it says write the equation of a trend line. We're not going to write the equation of a trend line here. We're just going to talk about what a trend line is. So here's your definition, right? So a trend line models the data in a scatter plot by showing the general direction. A trend line fits the data as close as possible. So if you take a look here, we have a uh, year starting in 2000, number of electric hybrid cars sold in the thousands. So again, um, I think that, uh, you know, this point right here, right, 2000, year 2000, hybrid cars are just kind of up and coming, right? So uh, this would be three. So the year 2003 right here, yeah, there's only like 50,000 cars. But as the time goes past and more companies start to build more hybrid cars, more hybrid cars are sold. So as your X is increasing, as your time, in general, your Y is increasing. So this would show a positive association. Positive association. 
So in general, you can see that this is the first point down in the bottom left, and as you go to the right, you get points going up and up. So again, if I try to draw a trend line, this is a line that kind of fits the data. It doesn't go through all the points, but it kind of fits the data. So some are on the left, some are on the right of this line. So if I take a look at this trend line or this data, I'm going to draw a trend line just like this. And again, this could be a little bit off from what yours is. But you see that trend line right there? So I did go through this point just by randomness, but you see we have one, two, let me circle them. We have one, two, three points above. This one's kind of close to the line. And then we have one, two, three points below, sort of close to the line. And then you have a point on, right? So that's a pretty good trend line right there. So that's how you want to think of these trend lines. It's not going through all the data points, but being um, surrounded by the data pretty, pretty closely. Okay, so this right here, this line I just drew, that's called a trend line or a line of best fit or a line of fit as we talk uh, today, trend line. All right, so let's talk about uh, finding a uh, equation for the line of best fit on the next slide. Okay, so we have this problem here. Let me slide this over here. So it says, uh, what is the equation of the line of best fit for the data in the table? So first of all, let's graph this data. And again, it's not necessary. You can use Desmos, but uh, I'll just graph it real fast. So we have, uh, this is going to be our X, this internet speed in kilobytes per second. And this is our Y time to download a 100 megabyte something or other in minutes, right? So this is our speed. And again, I apologize for if you can't read that speed. And that's in kilobytes per second. And this is our time. And again, I cannot turn sideways, so I'll just do like this time. And that's going to be in minutes. Okay, so sorry if you can't read all that writing. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at our table. And we're going to say, okay, our X's are going from 35 to 60. And our Y's are going from 3.88 to 6.65. So a lot of times when it comes to data, we don't start at 0, 0. We do these things called these breaks. So we put like these jagged lines. And now I'm going to start here and here at an X and Y value that makes sense for the data I have. So I'm going to start my X's at 30. I know the first one is 35, but again, it's nice to start on a nice 10. And let's count by fives. So 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, right? And that's going to fit all of my 6x values. And now for my y's, again, uh, it's from 3.88 to 6.65. Let's start at 3, again, just a nice, and let's count by 0.5s. So 3.5, 4, 4.55, 5.56, 5 6.57, 7.58. There, and that ensures that all of my data is on there. And now let's graph our points. So we're going to the right 35 and up 6.65. So this is 6.5, so 6.65 is a little bit above. And then we go to the right 40 and up 5.82, which is just below 6. And then we go 45, 5.17, which is just above 5. And we do 50 and 6 or 4.65. And then we do 55 and 4.23, which is halfway about between 4 and 4.5, and 60 and 3.88, which is just below 4. And there is our data, right? And if you take a look here, this looks to be a negative correlation, right? You see, as my x's are going this way, my y's are going down. I'm going to try to draw a trend line as best I can fitting this data. Again, wish me luck because i got to go across the way. So something like that. I might need to, to, to bring it down just a smidge. But again, I got a point on, a point above. Yeah, so that's my best guess. But this is going to be what our trend line looks like. Okay. So now when we get the equation, we can kind of check to see uh, what we think. Now, how are we going to get this equation of our trend line? We're going to do what's called a linear regression right here. Linear regression. It's a method used to calculate the line of best fit. And again, it's the line of best fit that fits the trend line most closely. So here is how we're going to do it on Desmos, and I'll put the steps right here, and then we'll go ahead and talk about it. So Desmos. So first thing, you're going to click the plus sign in the top left corner, and you're going to add a table. And you're going to type in your table of values, X's and Y's. Okay? Uh, make sure that your table says X1 and Y1. We'll look at that when we add the table. And then secondly, you're going to type in your slope-intercept form equation, but you've got to use the ones like this, Y1, and you've got to click click the squiggle or the tilde. It's the 
It's the left button on the keyboard. I press shift in the left button on the keyboard, top left button next to the one to get that squiggle. And then it's MX1 plus B. When we do this, we should get our line of best fit. All right. So I'm going to leave this slide. My writing's going to go away, unfortunately. And we're going to uh, get the equation of our line. All right. So let me go to Desmos. Okay. And again, I'm going to click add a table. And I'm going to start typing in my data. So 35, if you use the tab key, it goes to the Y value to put the corresponding Y value. Notice above here, I have X1 and Y1. That's what you want. Click the tab key, it goes to the next one, 45.82, uh, 45, and uh, 5.17, uh, 50, and 4.65, 50, then press the tab, 4.65, uh, 55, and 4.23, and 60, and 3.88. Okay, so I have my data in. Again, it's very easy to make a mistake. If you want to see your data, again, you need to zoom out because those are bigger numbers than 0, 5, and 10. So if you zoom out a couple times, drag the 0 to the corner, there you go. There's your data. So now, in the box below here, I'm going to drag this up in the top corner. You need to click or type that slope intercept form. Y1, shift, top left button for the squiggle, MX1 plus B. And you can see that it does some crazy things down here and it puts a line. This is going to be the slope intercept form equation for the line of best fit, the best fitting trend line for your. Uh, your trend line. And if you look here, this gives you your slope and your y intercept. We're going to round to two decimals. So I'll write it right here and then I'll copy it back on our slide. So y equals my slope is negative 0 0.1. And this 0 rounds up to a 1 because of the 9. Negative 0.11x. And then my b is a positive 10.2. The 6 stays the same because of the 1. This is your trend line. So now, if we go back to our notes here, oh, look at that. It kind of stayed-ish. Nope, there it goes. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So now it says, if you look at the problem here, it says, uh, assuming the trend continues, how long would it take to download the 100 megabyte file that has an internet speed of 75 kilobytes per second? Well, that is an X value. So they're telling us, hey, I have an X value of 75, what would be the y value? Well, we have this nice trend line, right? We just figured out y equals negative 0.11x plus 10.26. Earlier in this topic, topic three or lesson three, two, we talked about evaluating functions. This trend line is a function. Take your x value of 75 and plug it in. y equals negative 0.11 times 75 plus 10.26. And you would just type this left side into De or the right side into Desmos, and you would get a single number, and that number here is 2.01, and that would be in minutes. And that's how long it takes for a. Uh, uh, that's how long. I'm sorry. That's how long it takes to download if your internet speed is 75 kilobytes per second. All right. So I'm going to stop there with video one, and we'll bring up video two here shortly.